In this video, I'm going to talk about the 74163 integrated synchronous counter. I know that sounds very complicated, but really it's not. This chip is just four flip-flops put together in one chip. And you've seen this kind of chip already. And I'm gonna talk about specifically how to use it in the next slide. But if you open it up in multi-SIM, here's what it looks like. It has a bunch of inputs, a bunch of outputs, and some other inputs on the, on the bottom. And I'll talk about what these do in the next slide. And on the right here, if you actually get the chip and plug it into a breadboard, this is what it looks like. It has various inputs and outputs as well. And the pins are in different positions on the actual chip than they are in the diagram. But that's really no big deal. All right, let's take a look at how this works. Here's what the chip looks like in multi-SIM. So I have it connected in a pretty simple way and I could count through it and you can see it counts. Here I am running the clock. I have a little push button thing for my clock. It goes from zero up to 15 and then it starts again, A, B, C, D, E, F, back to zero. So uh, let's just go over the inputs real quick and the outputs, I should say. So QA, QB, QC, QD, these are the outputs. And here I have it going to this hex display. Keep in mind that QA, that's the ones place. So I have it going to the ones place of this display. So the ones place, the twos place, the fours place, the eights place, this is binary, of course. These are my outputs. Uh, RCO, that's a carry out. And if you noticed, if I, if I go all the way up to F, which is a 15, of course, you can see that this light comes on. This is a carry out. You can use this as the input to another one of these chips. If you wanted to count beyond 15 and put another digit in there, you could use it for that purpose. Uh, A, B, C, and D on this side. Now I'm not using them here, but these are the inputs. This I can use to start the count at a particular number. Now I don't have anything connected here, so the count is going to start at zero, but in the next slide, I'll show you some other starting value for the count. And this is pretty simple to use. The next two buttons, ENP and ENT, you have to tie those to power in order for the thing to count. It enables counting. I have no idea why these pins are even here, but these two pins, you basically have to power to five volts or the thing won't count at all. Uh, the next uh, pin here is this load pin. Now here I have it tied to high. I have it tied to one because I don't want to load in an initial count. It'll, I'm using the default. It starts counting at zero. In the next slide, you'll see where, when I would use this load. This is a clear. I, can, I have that connected to a switch. I can clear the count, or in other words, start it at zero by hitting the, uh, this switch right here by sending this a zero. And of course, this is the clock. So actually, let me, let me just hit the clear and you can see what goes on here. So let's say here I am counting along, zero, one, two, three, four, five. If I flip down, I just flip this key down to the clear. Notice it did not clear the seven. It did not start it at zero until I hit the clock. So this is referred to as a synchronous clear. It only clears, let me do it again because it's a little weird. So. I'm counting, here I am counting, la 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 la. Now I'm gonna hit the space key, the switches kind of come down. Notice it did not clear until I clock it again. I'll clock it again, right? Then it goes to zero. It's a synchronous clear because it doesn't clear until the clock goes again. It's synchronized with the clock. All right, let's look at the next slide and you can see we'll, how we can define the count range between two numbers. Again, the default is it for it to count from zero to F or uh, 15 in, in base 10. Let's check out the count range of this 74163 counter, shall we? So here I'll count through. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So this is counting from one to five. It starts at one because I have A, which is the least significant bit tied to power. So I have a one going into A, B, C, and D, I have grounded. So B is, of course, the twos place, C is the fours place, D is the eights place, or most significant pit. I have all of these grounded, and I have A powered. So a one, zero, 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 right? I have a one in the least significant bit. It starts counting at one. Hey, it's as simple as that. So why does it count up to five? Well, that's this part. That's this little logic I have right here. Well, let's see why it starts counting at five. So uh, I have a not gate 
tied to the most significant. Uh, so when this is a zero, when the most significant bit is a zero, when the eighth place is a zero, I have a one because I'm, I'm nodding it. I have a one going into my NAND gate. When the fours place, see this is the fours place, uh, is a one, I have a one coming in here. When the twos place, that's this guy right here, is a zero, because of this not gate right here, I have a one coming in. And when the ones place is a one, I have a one coming in. I, maybe I said that in a complicated way, but basically when the eights place is a zero, when the fours place is a one, when the twos place is a zero, and when the ones place is a one, right? That's a five in binary, one plus zero in this place, plus a four, that's a five in binary. When I have a five in binary, this NAND gate will send out a zero to this load and it'll load in whatever I have at these inputs right here, which is a one. So that's why it counts from one to five. Now, this is this chip works a little bit differently than other chips you've seen. And in other chips and every other counter actually that you've seen, you have to, if you want to count to five, you have to have it reset on six. Well, here I want it to count to five. I actually have a five here. You know what I'm saying? The reason that this works this way is because this is a synchronous load. So I have a five here, but it doesn't get loaded until I clock it again for the six. So again, I'm counting through three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. And what you have to remember about this chip again is if you want it to count to five or some particular number, that's what you set it to. You don't have to set it one past what you would, what you want it to count to as you do in every other single chip or every other uh, counter that we've seen so far. So this is it's not too complicated. And in the lab, you're gonna play around with these a little bit and I think they'll make total sense to you. All right, get to work.